you know, I, I wasn't asked to debate, you know, the cost of drugs or the financial benefits of therapies, and I think we somewhat obscure the debate when we start admixing data from first-line trials into second-line trials because we're dealing with very different patient populations. And I think actually uh, Harry somewhat conceded the debate when he made the point quite appropriately that small incremental gains are how we've moved the ball forward in oncology. And I think, uh, you know, to, to, uh, to dismiss small incremental advances too quickly is a bit of an overstatement. So, so where do we stand with uh, chemotherapy in uh, esophagogastric cancer? I, I showed this slide yesterday uh, really to indicate that we have a number of first-line uh, chemotherapy options that are only very modestly effective. We really have not broken the one-year survival barrier. Uh, generally, two drug regimens are most appropriate in first line, and most of us will either use a fluorinated pyrimidine platinum, um, uh, which achieves very similar outcomes to triplet regimens, and uh, in general, response rates in only 30 to 40 percent of patients and survivals of only about 10 months. Uh, now, what about second-line chemotherapy? Yes, second-line chemotherapy does uh, provide uh, modest benefits as well. Uh, and as Harry indicated, the benefits are very limited. Uh, and this is clearly an unmet need in our patients in that second-line chemotherapy uh, uh, really extends a survivorship less than two months, has very, very small response rates. Uh, and actually, response rates of generally less than 10 percent really argue against a, a highly uh, a strong impact of second-line treatment in terms of the treatment of second-line uh, refractory disease, but certainly second-line chemotherapy has now been adopted with taxanes and arenatecan with modest benefits. And Harry showed these slides earlier. Again, we see very, you know, modest uh, incremental benefits in survival and, uh, and some of the studies indicating as well quality of life improvements, uh, but uh, in comparison to best supportive care. So uh, I saw this cartoon in the New Yorker uh, a few months ago, and I thought this kind of summarizes what I do for a living uh, every day. Uh, you can see that in first-line chemotherapy, uh, the, the boat hits uh, an iceberg, and then the patients get on the, uh, get on the lifeboat and hit uh, an iceberg in second-line chemotherapy. And you can see that lifeboat getting smaller and smaller, and uh, there they are heading for that uh, next iceberg again. So um, I thought this kind of summarized what I do for a living. It's very frustrating. So uh, I think uh, our hope is to really start to explore biologic therapies that have different side effect profiles that are really targeting uh, novel um, uh, targets in tumors uh, and really trying to move beyond uh, uh, what we see as really a limited benefit of chemotherapy. And, uh, and uh, albeit modest, uh, uh, VEGFR2 targeted therapy did demonstrate a benefit in the REGARD trial, a randomized trial, relatively small number of patients. Uh, so I think uh, to argue statistical significance, this was a relatively small study, only 355 patients um, um, uh, treated with uh, best supportive care versus best supportive care plus ramucirumab. And arguably, the survival and PFS benefits were very modest, uh, but patients did get a benefit for this uh, agent in terms of a modest overall survival improvement, very comparable to what we see with second-line chemotherapy as well as PFS benefits. And uh, these are similar benefits that we've seen to drugs like TAS-102 and regorafenib uh, in colon cancer, and certainly regorafenib is now approved uh, in that uh, setting. Now, to me, this summarizes uh, the argument for biologics. Uh, uh, Harry argued that ramucirumab was less effective than chemotherapy, and I don't think that argument really holds up uh, if we uh, compare uh, the outcomes sort of head-to-head. -head. Uh, uh, here we see really no difference um, in terms of median overall survival achieved uh, versus best supportive care with ramucirumab versus chemotherapy. So uh, arguably, ramucirumab achieves comparable modest uh, survival benefits uh, compared to uh, chemotherapy alone in this setting. So to argue that ramucirumab is not as effective, I think, is an argument that doesn't hold water. Now, to me, I think the more clinically relevant is the combination of a targeted agent with chemotherapy. And, uh, and again, arguably, you know, small survival increments, uh, are, 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 are they really worth the, the investment? But this trial, I think, was proof of principle that combining a biologic agent with chemotherapy could achieve 
clinically meaningful improvements in survival compared to chemotherapy alone. Uh, this was a, a larger study, um, a better powered, uh, over 660 patients, giving standard paclitaxel versus paclitaxel plus remesuramab, and this was a positive trial. Uh, now, uh, Harry made a lot about the survival curves crossing at a year. Uh, one could actually consider, I mean, just sort of think outside the box here, we certainly know that anti-angiogenic therapy in colorectal cancer, that patients benefit if we continue the anti-angiogenic anti therapy to later lines of therapy. Certainly when patients progressed on this treatment, they stopped ramaciramab and just food for thought. What if the drug were continued into later lines of therapy? I think it's a research question, but uh, whether or not the drug might benefit patients into third line therapy is, is something that might be considered. But this is a survival improvement, modest 2.3 months. Uh, uh, if we look at uh, improvements in outcome for um, uh, survival benefits for drugs like uh, cetuximab and panitumumab, early reports of um, survival benefits showed similar magnitudes of benefit compared to chemotherapy alone. Progression-free survival, again, was also improved, but again, a modest improvement. So I agree that the future really is to try and target uh, agents more specifically uh, based on uh, biologic profiles. Other than uh, HER2, we really don't have a biomarker to identify treatments. And again, I think to compare first and second line chemotherapy uh, trials is very misleading. Uh, we don't expect to see as significant benefits in second line treatment, but I think a drug like ramaciramab, a targeted agent, has met the modest bar of improvement in outcomes in these patients. And obviously, uh, we put a lot of faith in the future of developing immunotherapies, um, and these, this is a work in progress. And uh, Harry said uh, that, you know, we, we, we obviously we have to pay the bill for this, but look at the range of targeted agents that are in development in second line. This is a very, very active area of research uh, targeting uh, 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 areas like mTOR, HER2, MET, EGFR, PARP. So uh, really the wave of the future is not looking at more chemotherapies in second line, but trying to exploit and develop uh, targeted agents. And Again, if we set the bar too high, we may be make missing signals because how we made incremental progress in other diseases was all these little two and three month increments of survival start to add up in terms of years of survival improvement in our patients. So uh, my conclusion, second line chemotherapy shows modest improvements uh, with either taxanes or arinotecan with the expected toxicities of chemotherapy. I think VEGFR2 is now a validated target I would argue that remisuramab achieves similar PFS and OS benefits and arguably less toxicity. Uh, I think to me the most clinically relevant for practitioners is the combination of a targeted agent with chemotherapy where we really did see modest but clinically improvements and clinically meaningful improvements in response rate, progression-free and overall survival. And I would argue that uh, uh, ramaciramab plus paclitaxel represents the new standard of care in second line. It's achieved an unprecedented median survival of nine months. Uh, and I'm not going to argue about costs because that's not the question I was asked to, to answer today. And the uh, increase in um, uh, toxicity was really minimal. Uh, to argue that a 2% increase in bleeding is clinically meaningful I don't think is relevant to this discussion. The future directions uh, I think are going to be the ongoing trials in HER2. Uh, perhaps exploiting alternative uh, uh, combinations of drugs like ramaciramab now that we've va validated this as a target, and certainly immunotherapy, even combination, in combination with antiangiogenics and HER2 agents, is a high priority in uh, future research. Thanks very much.